from what I have heard about Yuka in the game, her ties are one of her signature features, like her ties are godly. She has 100 kilogram ties, something like that. And Good Smile is replicating it, like they are telling you her ties are so heavy that the chair is already <laughs> deformed. Hi and welcome back to the channel, Steven right here with your weekly figure news fix this time around 25th to 30th of March 2024. This week we have a lot of new skill figures on pre-order, like seriously a lot. And on the third party side, there are quite a number of interesting stuff going on as well. So this is a pretty interesting week. Uh, firstly, we'll go through Hobby Link Japan and I have received some feedback from you guys saying that the prices are really expensive because you... Uh, you were being directed to pay in your own currency. Like, if you are from US, you're paying in US dollar. If you are from UK, you're paying in British pounds. Please don't do that, right? What you should be doing, on the homepage, you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the website. You'll see this section, prices in, and then you'll switch from your currency to Japanese yen. And this should be the very first step you do whenever you visit any Japanese figure website. Ninin Game does the same, they display your own country's currency, they detect your location, they switch to your currency. Always switch back to Japanese again, and if you do have an account over there, yes, go to your settings, change the settings to Japanese yen. No matter where you shop from, always pay in the seller's cur uh, currency, right? You buy from Japan, you pay in yen, you buy from China, you pay in Chinese yuan, Pay in seller's currency and lack. Pay in the seller's currency and let your bank or even PayPal do the conversion for you. It is a lot cheaper that way. Moving on to the scale figures on pre-order this week, I have selected the stuff I want to cover over here. All right, uh, we shall begin with one by four scales as usual. Only one this week on HLJ. One by four scale Asuka Bunny version from Senran Kagura again. Right. I actually like this one quite a lot more than Homura from last week. Well, I don't have a problem with 10 lines in general. I think they make some figures appear unique. Yeah, Homura was a figure with 10 lines, but I think that one has too little clothes on. Yeah, this one feels way more well-balanced in a way, but still, <laughs> I mean, for Senran Kagura collectors, you guys don't have many figures, right? Like, there are not many options in the market. Maybe pick one up, yeah. 35k is somewhat acceptable for something like this. I mean, Free Ink has 1x4 skills going over 40k or even 50 plus. Yeah. And not to mention, kneeling post figures like this, they are not very big in size in terms of the packaging, the box. So shipping should be relatively reasonable. Uh, moving on to the next one, we have a few somewhat questionable figures over here. But anyways, yeah. Uh, this is from Doki Boki, which I assume... Is it a Chinese brand? <laughs> you see, I keep forgetting to do my homework. I should be digging more about Doki Boki and a few of these new figure brands, right? Doki Boki already has like two or three figures on pre-order at the moment. But never mind, I don't think the origin of the brand is that important, to be honest. Okay, uh, one by six skill, Aoyuki and Akayuki, illustrated by Yuki Neko. Oh, that is a very nice name. Aoyuki Akayuki by Yuki Neko. Oh, very nice. Okay, so you have a pair of Opai squeezing figures, which is a very overdone pose to be honest. Like, Auto has Azalean figures with the same pose, and there are Skytube figures with a similar pose, I think. So this is not, not a very rare pose. Just that, two 1x6 scale figures at 28,000 yen, so you are paying only 14k each. Yes, that is really cheap, but at the same time, I can already tell that this is not a very detailed figure. Like, I could tell based on the sculpt alone. Though I don't think any of you who are interested in this figure actually cares because this is something you decide to buy or not based on whether you like the artwork, right? And I don't see any other figure brands licensing the very same artwork, making the same exact figure. Like, this kind of thing does happen once in a while. Like, uh, Lambda from FGO. Fat company and outer doing the same exact figure like this kind of things do happen but it is really rare so now we have doki boki licensing this specific artwork into a figure yeah i don't see other brands picking up the very same artwork at least that is what i believe over here 
Hmm. Personally, if I want an Opai squeezing figure, I would still hunt down the Azadine figures. Yeah, that pair of figures by Alter. I like that one quite a bit more compared to this one. Solely based on the character design standpoint. Moving on to the next one over here. Okay, it is kind of odd seeing Hobby Link Japan <laughs> opening pre-order for an army army made figure. Anyways, uh, two of them over here. Idol Master Cinderella Girls figures. Shiki Ichinose by Ami Ami, 24,500 yen coming out in May next year. So one year and three or four months, which is quick. Or oh, one year and two months, which is still a long wait, right? And this feels expensive. I know the base is kind of nice like that is... I have always been a fan of compact looking rock bases like this one. But still, 24,500 yen does feel pretty pricey to me in a way. Mm, yeah, the other girl is also pre-order open. This one right here for the same price, Asuka, Ninomiya. Needless to say, you need both, right? They are a set. Yeah, both of these look amazing together. Like, I would really love to photograph these two figures com uh, combined with the base and then I do my own scene and photograph it. I would love to do that. But seriously, I can't justify 24,500 yen for each of these. Almost 50k for both before shipping, right? Idol Master, I only have one figure left at the moment. Altus Ranko, yeah, that big one, that big figure. I love that one, I'm not selling that. Actually, I listed it online for sale, but I am not discounting it because that is such a rare figure. If no one buys it, so be it. Like, I'm keeping the figure if no one wants it, right? That is an incredible figure, the one by Alter, Kanzaki Ranko. Okay, uh, moving on to the next one over here. We have an original character by PM Office A, formerly known as Plum. Shelfeta Elf, right? An elf, yes, it is. Twenty. This is originally twenty-eight thousand yen, where it feels like you're paying six thousand yen for that huge tree trunk base. <laughs> Actually, I'm kind of wondering this setup over here. An elf, which is a very traditional species, at least that is what I. <laughs> that is the image I have on this species of living thing in isekai anime or fantasy anime in general. Tree trunk is something you'll find in the forest, right? You can see when, where I'm going with this one. Yeah, I'm questioning anime logic again when I shouldn't. So you have an electric guitar and is that an... I'm not familiar with musical instruments, you see. Is that a speaker or an amp? Doesn't matter what it is. But those the kind of things require a power source, right? And you don't find that in a forest. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> this is this is a really odd combination to me. The more I look at it, but nonetheless, the figure itself is pretty attractive. <laughs> Twenty-eight thousand yen, yeah. Seriously, the price you're paying it for the base and accessories over here, and you know the tree trunk. I wish I could zoom in more. I would like to see all those texture on the side. It feels like they cut too much corners over there, right? It is just a grey piece of plastic on the side that is not cool at all, plum. Not cool at all. I want to see all those lines in, when you cut uh, uh, when you cut apart a tree trunk, right? Yeah, all those texture they are really important to me. Hmm, not the best L figure for sure. Like, I would be totally content with collecting the uh elf village series of figures by Vertex. Those are amazing. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next one over here. By Furio, we have a 1x7 skill, Serno from Toho Project. Now, this one is very adorable. She looks beautiful over here. Yeah, this won't be a big figure. That's why she is cheap, 18,500 yen, coming out this December. Just that, you know, I, I don't trust Furio that much nowadays because... I don't know whether those crystals behind her are as attractive as what is being shown is in these pictures. I hope they are. I seriously hope, right? Because to me, the standout feature of this figure are definitely those ice crystals behind her. It looks amazing, at least in these pictures. Just that Furio has quite the reputation nowadays for under-delivering, like... The figures look amazing in these product pictures, but the actual figure feels a lot more meh in comparison. They look more average, more meat in a way. Yeah, that is my concern over here. If we do get exactly as promised by these pictures over here, man, I'll tell you, go and pick one up. 
This is really nice. I like it a lot. I don't collect the whole, I don't have a single figure, but I am liking this one a lot. Yeah. Moving on to the next one, we have one of the most expensive figures or statues this week. Dead Alive 5. Is season 5 even out? Not yet, right? The anime isn't out yet until 4, ne? Anyways, uh, Tokisaki Kurumi again. Like, this is 6,900th figure of her already. <laughs> Life-sized bust figure. Uh, 300,000 yen. Now, this one looks a lot better than that Azalin uh, bust figure that went on pre-order almost a month ago. That Azalin figure, which was the main title of that figure news fix video that particular week, if I remembered correctly, that one looked outright creepy, like as if the thing is possessed in a way by something paranormal, and then... <laughs> Yeah, it looks creepy, that one. But this Kugumi is a lot more... Ah, uh, I like it a lot. Like, I don't collect bust figures. I don't see myself buying them. Even if Furu is giving me an 80% discount, I don't think I would buy one, right? Uh, not my kind of figure, but this is one of my favorite bust figures by Furu yet so far. I thought this was the second one, but someone told me no, they have made a lot more. There was also Misaka Mikoto, yeah, which I have forgotten that one even existed. But so far, this is my favorite bust figure coming from Furio. Let's hope they don't screw this up. By right, they shouldn't because this is life-sized. This thing is massive, right? And Furio, maybe include some soft, squishy material for the chest? Yeah, <laughs> I don't think they will do it. Like, Japanese companies are not really known for doing this very often. But at this scale, why not, right? <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next one. This is super random once again. There are not many bad things I would, I would say about Chinese figure companies nowadays, but if there is one criticism I often had for Chinese brands, is that they make really weird decisions. Maybe there is logic behind it within the Chinese market, right? Like, just like Japanese brands, they decide what to make based on the demand in the domestic Japanese market. I believe for Chinese brands, it is the same. They are looking at the Chinese market. So I don't know very well about the Chinese market, which is why I think they make really odd decisions like this 1x9 skill, Guilty Gear Strife Jack O figure. Yeah, this Jack O pose over here, this is something very common in third-party figures, right? There was even a Thanos figure, yeah. <laughs> Thanos with, with this exact pose. And then there has been countless Final Fantasy and even Nier Automata, Genshin as well, figures with this pose over here, resin figures, right? However, Apex chose to go for a Guilty Gear character. I think this is their first Guilty Gear figure. And they went for this pose for some reason and gave her a 1x9 skill. Not 1x12 or 1x10 or 1x8, 1x7, 1x6. It had to be 1x9. Yes, surely this is really cheap. 7,500 yen. And if you like the character, you like the game, there are no reasons not to pre-order one. But this is such a weird decision. Both the choice of character and the skill they went for over here. Why not 1x7? Right. 1 by 9 is way too small, and I won't be satisfied, yeah, if I were the collector over here. Uh, moving on to the next one, I feel I've covered this figure in Ami Ami last week, but I can't be certain, because you no, know, these figures are all over the place. Uh, my G Arts 1 by 6 skill, Sien Ren Nation series, Kirin. Ah, Kirin is a mythical creature in Chinese culture. Okay, uh, 20,000 yen, 1 by 6 skill. Why not, right? If you like the character design, by all means, go ahead. Magic Arts, it seems like they are doing 1 by 6 skill and 1 by 4 skill. No, no, I mean 1 by 7 and 1 by 4 for some figures. Like last week, we had a pair of 1 7 and 1 4. So that one was amazing. This one, I'm not too attracted. Like, I don't have a problem with the character design, just that doesn't feel that special to me in a way, yeah. Or maybe as an Asian, as a Chinese, I am used to seeing this kind of mythical creatures from Chinese folklore, yeah. And this figure reminds me a bit of my Shuten Doji figure, the caster version by uh, Skill, yeah. <laughs> the hopping zombie one, yeah, it feels similar in a way, though not exactly the same. 
Moving on to the next one, we have three good small company figures. The first one, we have Kei Karizawa Kimono version from Classroom of the Elite. Yeah, season 3, 18,000 yen only, coming out January next year. You know, sometimes I also have no idea what good small company is thinking. Like, are they planning to do a series of kimono figures for every Classroom of Elite characters? I have no idea at all. What if they just did K and the other girls are missing, right? At least the important supporting characters and main characters. Uh, <laughs> I really have no idea what they are thinking, man. At least this is a really cheap figure and do you consider her as waifu material? Let me know down in the comments below. Yeah, uh, she is currently the favorite tool of Ayano Koji Kiyotaka. Have you finished season 3? Oh, finally there is a confession. Yeah. I'm going to spoil you guys right now. The main character confessed to her and she said yes, that is really nice indeed. Mm. Let's hope she is not just a tool for the sake of convenience, right? Okay, 18k is a really great price. I have no complaints about the pricing at all over here. If you like K, go ahead and get it, right? Alright, let's move on to the next one. Uh, this is one of the main highlights this week. Even though this is a relatively cheap figure, like 17,000 yen only, for this 1x7 skill blue archive Yuka figure, right? Uh, coming out in April next year. That is a long wait. You see, when good small companies' figures are so random, like some figures will be releasing this December like that. K Karizawa figure earlier. And then the next one that went on pre-order on the same day, yeah, April next year, which I think reinforces my theory that there are multiple different themes under Good Smile Company. Each team have their own figures and their own personal projects in a way, and yeah, their own timeline, release timeline. That is what I'm uh, very certain of it at the moment over here. This is already one of the best figures of Yuka out there, and she is really cheap. Yeah, because I heard that this is a very low accurate character. From what I have heard, I don't play the game by the way. I buy figures because I like their character design. Yeah. From what I have heard about Yuka in the game, her ties are one of her signature features. Like, her ties are godly. She has 100 kilogram ties, something like that. And Good Smile is replicating it. Like, they are telling you her ties are so heavy that the chair is already <laughs> deformed because it is so heavy. <laughs> No, that is not the reason, you see. Uh, the thing with anime figures in general is that Japanese figure collectors, right, they care a lot about the perfection of an anime figure. Like, they don't want any holes or any weird shapes just to fit a base, which is why you see Amakuni and a number of other figure brands, they spam so many transparent plastic rods in the figure instead of, you know, adding more packs or using a custom base, a Dioma base with a metal pack going into the figure, like they don't want to drill a hole in the figure. They would rather use a plastic support rod because the Japanese, they don't like having all these uh, defects, so-called defects in an anime figure. They don't want all these <laughs> holes or weird shapes, right? Uh, but this is a good thing. In this case, like there is no reason to flatten the bottom of the figure. You see some older anime figures, the sitting pose ones, the bottom of the figure is completely flat. Flat ties, flat backside, and it looks weird. It looks bad. So in this case over here, I think uh, grounding off <laughs> the office chair over here is actually the right thing to do, right? Are there any magnets? I don't think so. Not at this price. But the best thing Good Smile would have done with this figure, should they choose to do so, is to insert magnets both in the chair and in her backside, and then, you know, the figure just snaps into the chair. You know, I just love it when figures, they snap into place with magnets, like, Pyak! and then you, it feels really secure in a way. I love that feel, yeah. But I don't see that happening over here. Not important, but I wish that Good Smile would do so. Mm. As a fan of Blue Archive characters in general, yeah, I am very pleased about this figure. I don't see myself pre-ordering one, but... There is a very high likelihood I would buy one after release, yeah. This figure is already so cheap, but as a cheapskate, I'm looking for better deals if I can, yeah.
Moving on to the next one, uh, the third good small figure over here, one by seven scale jazz from Butareba, only twenty one thousand yen. Why is this more expensive than Yuka when Yuka comes with an office chair? Sometimes I just don't get it. <laughs> uh, the way they price their figures, I really have no idea. Maybe, uh, my speculation over here, maybe they don't expect to sell as many figures of jazz compared to Blue Archive. So, if you look at manufacturing quantity standpoints over here, yeah, the more you mass produce something, the cheaper it becomes. So, maybe this figure of Jazz is not as mass produced as a number of other figures of popular characters, right? I'm just guessing over here. I have no idea because I think Yuka is a more sophisticated and more complex figure than this figure of Jazz over here, yet, this one is more expensive. Of course, it could be due to a higher licensing cost, but every genuine figure, you are paying for the cost of license anyway. So, there is no point overthinking, I suppose. One of my own bad habits as a person is I like to overthink. Now, this is possibly the only skill figure of Jess out there, I think. There, there is a tiny tall figure, a low-cost figure of her by Furio. And I think there is also a pop-up rate, but this is probably the only skill figure of her. And this is a really attractive one. For some reason, I feel I'm looking at another saber face again. <laughs> Next one here, one by six skill exercise girl Aoi by Momo Rosa, Chinese brand making low cost skill figures coming out in November. Yes, six thousand two hundred yen is a great buy, even though the detail level on this is kind of average or even below average, right? I mean, at this price, this is barely one thousand yen more than uh, pop up rates. If you like the character design, no reason to say no, and. Given the sheer number of original character figures nowadays and how creative the character designs are, somehow yoga isn't very common as a theme. Yeah, but there are more figures featuring yoga coming up. So this is not the first one. There are more coming. And I think that was a Chinese brand. Was it Magic Arts again? I'm not sure. The prototype, the grey color sample, it is like the girl is stretching her legs wide like this, 90 de uh, 180 degrees. That one was really unique as well, not yet on pre-order, but should be quite soon. I am actually looking forward to that one, right? Hmm. Maybe I'll pick one up after release, right? Because I want to review figures of these less common figure brands. Yeah. Moving on to the next one over here. One by six kill Azalein Kronstadt. Begin the rush figure by Golden Head. Okay, Golden Head, their stuff are not cheap, but their figures are very decent. 27,000 yen. Mm, coming out this December. Yes, 27k is really expensive, but I don't think <laughs> like cheap Azalean figures are that common at all. There were a few like by Wave Corporation, they cost like 21, 22k, but most Azalean figures start from 25k and up. Mm. I kind of like this office lady look in a way on this figure. The only figures I've seen holding a megaphone like that, I think was, yeah, Hatsune Miku figures are there. Anyone else? I like this. I like this figure a lot. Colors are on the dull side, but that one single megaphone with red color strap, stripe on it makes the figure stands out a lot more. Oh, this is, this is amazing photography work. The lights are real, I think. The lights on the background are real. The, the guy is using LEDs. It is photos like this that makes me want figures even more. Like Some figures, they look fairly pedestrian under, until you see a professional do all this photography work and then it makes you want the figure even more. Yeah. Moving on to the next one. Like This is a major head scratcher to me. Personally, I can't recommend this figure as a collector of FGO figures. 1x8 skill assemble heroines rider Kenny's Summer Queen's version from FGO 8800 yen by Our Treasure. Except this is a half complete figure. Think of this as a semi completed, half completed model kit in some way where you may need to apply decals for the eye or you need to spray paint certain areas or do your own clear coating, you know. I don't want to give you guys false information because I have no experience at all with purchasing these half complete figures by our treasure but that is what I know about them like they are literally half complete and you need to do some work to make the figure appear more finished right 
But if you want a completed figure, like 100% completed PVC figure, there is an option, more expensive of, of course. The problem here is that it is an Army Army exclusive for almost 20,000 yen. And to be honest with you, this figure of Kanis looks horrible, right? Like, I don't like the face at all. I won't spend 5 minutes complaining about the level of detail of this figure. Especially at this 20,000 yen, I think it is overpriced, firstly. Secondly, the face on this figure of Kanis is nowhere near as good as the one by Good Smile Company. Good Smile has already made the best Kanis figure you can ever ask for. I have reviewed that figure on this channel, go and check her out. That face is like 10 out of 10. And that figure can be had for 21,000 yen or so. So why pay 20k for something way inferior, right? Just don't. Unless this thing bargain beans by half price, then maybe pick one up. But otherwise, just buy the good small one and you will be very happy with that one. Yeah. Moving on to the next one. Okay, uh, this figure, I have already covered it in OSGK a couple of weeks ago. As it turns out, yeah, since this is a licensed PVC figure, it is bound to appear in Japanese websites sooner or later. 1x6 skill, Mesugaki Ayaka Sukimi. Mesugaki, hehe. <laughs> Uh, by MSGM Project, never heard of them before, 14,400 yen. Okay, so once again, I don't like the character design on this a lot, and she is cheap, so maybe pick one up if you like her. Yeah, I'm not going to repeat things over again. Moving on to the next one over here, hey! What did I say last week? Yes, I guess that this is a licensed PVC figure, not resin. PVC figure, judging by the character design and the base design. Oh yes, I am right again. So now, this is actually an Apex Toys figure. This is made by Apex Toys. I don't know why OSGK listed it as by paper something. Some other brand name, but not important. Now that I know this is by Apex Toys, and at 21,500 yen, that sounds about right, right? Uh, 1 by 7 skill, Shining, Nikki, Nikki, Kacho, Geseki version. Hmm, yeah. PVC figure, as I suspected. Okay, moving on to the next one. Once again, this one was already on pre-order in OSGK. I covered it before, but let me repeat it again. Okay, because in general, I prefer to get uh, licensed figures from Japanese websites or Taobao, for example, right? And... This is 1x6 skill cat like girlfriend once again. 22,800 yen by Mimic. A new brand, never heard of them, right? Yeah, if you like the character design, pick one up. I think I've just covered this last week. Now, moving on to the next figure over here. Okay, the next three or four figures, they are low cost figures. First one over here, we have Homura Akemi. There was an older version of a pop upgrade in the past, right? Is this like version 2.0? This character is so popular, there is no way there has been no pop upgrades of her until now. But it is not like my memory is perfect either. Yeah, I love this figure a lot. I love the pose, feels really natural. And this is only 4,000 yen. Should you pre-order one, that is the ultimate question over here. Because in general, I don't recommend pre-ordering pop upgrades. But at the same time, I have no clue at all how popular Madoka is in Japan. Whether a figure skyrockets in price after release, you need to look at the Japanese market, not the international one. So, I know that this is very popular internationally, but in Japan, I have no clue at all, right? Just that, I do like this figure a lot, and for those of you on a budget, I think this is a no-brainer. Yeah. Moving on to the next one, we really is not surprised at all. Given how popular Goblin Slayer is, and there is a new season coming, 4,000 yen. Personally, I would go for the L size, right? There is an L size of him because more details, you know, bigger is better. <laughs> but here is a second chance if you missed out the first release. Yeah, this is a really good buy. I've seen this figure in person in a figure store. Yeah, the standard 4,000 yen one. And the level of detail on this thing is outstanding, like way above average compared to any other pop up rate figures out there. So this is actually a very good buy. And... If you want to pre-order it early, by all means, go ahead because this is a good buy, right? Moving on to the next one over here, pop up rate L, read from Banished from the Heroes Party. Oh yeah, how did I forget? 
I think I reached episode 4 or so and for some reason I stopped watching it. I'm not sure if because I wasn't impressed by the anime, it bought me to death or something, but I stopped watching it. Good Small Company once held a survey not too long ago asking for recommendations on what they should make for their pop-up rate line uh, of products. My response to the survey was very simple, which I did participate. I asked for more pop-up rate L size. Yeah, because I want bigger figures, right? Though Ritz isn't the kind of character I want though. Moving on to the next one. Okay, this is... Oh, available pre-order slots are full. Ouch. Anyways, a quick mention over here, Dragon Ball Arise sell first form, 28,000 yen by Plex, and yeah, he is already pre-order sold out. Mm. I don't buy aliens, so I'm good with this. <laughs> Moving on to the next four figures, yeah, all male characters over here. Uh, 1x7 skill, Wei Wuxian and Lan Wang Ji, Pledge of the Peony version. Ah, the Master of Diabolism. By good smile, I mean here two skill figures for 43,000 yen and yeah, kind of a nice base as well. I don't think that is expensive at all. Do you think they will make a skill figure of that handsome dude from the Apocatory Diaries? Uh, yeah, Kusuriyano Hitorigoto. That is not the kind of anime I would normally watch. And then after seeing uh, how many... Mau Mau figures were being announced in One Fest. I got curious. I went and finished the whole thing. 24 episodes, right? Oh, that anime was amazing. Yeah. Normally, I'm not a fan of history dramas, be it Chinese or Japanese. I'm not into that. But the Apocatory Diaries, I really enjoyed it. And I can see myself picking up a figure of Mau Mau later on, right? I know I've gone way off track over here, but the point here is that uh, yeah, these kind of Chinese theme figures and even anime series, they are really starting to gain traction nowadays. And the Master of Diabolism, even though I did not watch the anime adaptation, I don't see myself liking it. Uh, it is really popular, as far as I'm aware of. The only surprise over here is that this is made by Good Smile Company instead of Good Smile Arts Shanghai. Yeah. This is totally something I would see the Chinese branch doing it instead. Mm. The fan girls are going to be queuing up for this figure, man. Moving on to the next one, we have a 1x7 skill Jujutsu Kaisen Toge Inomaki from Full Ryo, 23,600 yen. Is that an okay price to you? Well, I suppose with that base over there and the effect parts, the price is more, more justifiable. Oh, Metal Rod, here we go. Uh, wait, uh, let me take... Ah, I see. Is the metal rod actually hidden when viewed from certain angles like, like this angle over here? I'm not too sure. Because there is still the possibility of the figure brand tricking you by not inserting a metal rod from this angle and then they only insert it when they took a picture from this angle. I'm not too sure over here. Because I would say that from this angle by right, you, you should be able to see a rod behind the figure. At least a portion of it. But it is not like I'm collecting JJK figures, so <laughs> not an issue to me. Mm. Man, I really don't know anymore. What's for sure is I do have trust issues with some figure brands. Yeah. Next figure over here, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Phantom Blood figure, Museum Jonathan and Dio. Oh, so we have <laughs> a severe head. Come on, there is not enough blood, not enough mess. <laughs> it needs to be bloody. <laughs> 18,000 yen by Sentinel. Yeah, Sentinel, they do make a lot of figures from Jojo somehow and their name does not appear very often. It feels like I see this name Sentinel a lot in Wonder Festival, but when it comes to weekly figure pre-orders, I don't see their name often for some reason. Or maybe they are making more mecha stuff. They also make mecha stuff, which I'm not pay att paying attention to. And the last figure from Jojo as well by D. Mauto Bene, 8,800 yen. This brand is also very average. Their quality is just... Hmm. 
quality control issues every once in a while, right? They have made uh, figures of Bishoujo anime girls before. They made a Saber Modred figure as well, and it wasn't really good. So that is one thing you should bear in mind with this brand over here, but at least this is a pretty cheap figure at 8,800 yen. Ah, a re-release. Of course, it is going to be cheap, right? Re-releases are normally lower cost because they already have the mold for the figure. That is all for figures on pre-order on HLJ at the time of recording. Now we move on to Ami Ami. There, as you can see over here, two versions of that Kenis figure, 9,000 yen and 19,800 yen. Too expensive, in my opinion, right? Now we move on to the first three figures, which are Ami Ami exclusives. Oh... Those are really heavy looking jugs for a high school <laughs> student. Uh, Sato Kuuki, original character, Arena Tachibana 1x7 skill by Plum. I don't know why Plum is calling themselves Plum in some figures, and for some other releases, they call themselves PM Office A. Maybe it is just branding, right? Different branch. 22,000 yen coming out in June next year june 2024 wow <laughs> okay this figure is partially cast off a belt and i actually like the casted off version you see mm, can i put the picture on screen i'm not too sure you see there is this magenta uh more like purple color suit underneath yeah this is cast off a belt oh that looks really heavy man <laughs> seam line along the side of the figure you see that line along the sides, I really hate that. But that is inevitable for figures that are cast offable, right? Mm, come on, pictures of the casted off one. Where is it? Where is it? And there you go. I actually like the casted off version a lot better. Yeah. There are not many figures which I would display with their clothes removed, but this would be one of them which I would display casted off because she looks so much better for some reason. I have no idea why. Next one over here, Fat Company and their Army Army exclusives. They always do that, right? As long the character is popular, there is a high chance they will do that. So this time around, it is Uma Musume. Mati Kane Tan Tanhoza. <laughs> Mati Kane Tanhoza. I know I am not pronouncing it correctly. Is that German? German, right? Uh, anyways, 28,800 yen. Oof. Yes, expensive. And please, fat company, please, if you're going to make this an exclusive, don't mess up the paint work. I really love trashing fat company because they really do deserve it, right? About three days ago, I published this video on a figure haul. I bought the Hokusai figure, which was originally a 32 or 33,000 yen figure. And that figure is far from perfect as well. Really beautiful figure, but it doesn't mean it doesn't have any flaws. And yeah. That was the reason why I refused to pay full price for that figure to begin with. Hmm. I like this figure. Right, I like it. Just that... <sighs> Ami Ami exclusive, man. Oh, I like this pose a lot more. She looks really confident. After all, they are racing horses, right? <laughs> hmm. Extra parts making the price somewhat more digestible, I suppose, but... I really am not a fan of this store exclusive stuff. The next one over here, okay, the next few figures on Ami Ami, they are not exclusives, but HLJ has not listed them for pre-orders yet. Now we have the third figure from this Demon Sword Master series, right? Her name is Elfine Fillet. Fish Fillet. 21,000 yen coming out this December. Yeah. Once again, we go back to the group photo, which I have mentioned twice or thrice by now. Where is the group photo? Mm, there we go. I think this is the only picture I need. Two figures are already on pre-order. This is the third one. Yeah, the two in front already on pre-order. We are waiting for the fourth one. And once again, Nippon Columbia. Yeah, that long title with the Nip Sleep gimmick system is not going to tempt me. <laughs> However, this is a unique figure. Like, you have four figures joining into one. Very unique display. Some people are going to like it. Moving on to the next one. Oh, our dating story. I haven't watched the anime yet. It is a seasonal anime. 12 episodes already finished airing. I haven't started watching. 
Uh, because I am not a fan of very wholesome anime, I prefer something that makes you guys feel painful, like NTR. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is a low cost figure by El Coco. Yeah, 3,500 yen. Don't expect anything outstanding or high detail, but at this price, hey, this is price figure territory in cost over here. Our dating story, the experienced you and the inexperienced me, Runa Shirakawa 1x7 skill, 3,500 yen. Yeah, seasonal anime stuff. There is no need to spend big money on a seasonal waifu where everyone forgets after the anime finishes airing. So this is potentially a very good purchase. Yeah. Moving on to the next one over here from Yu-Gi-Oh! Tour guide. A tour guide. Okay. 23,000 yen by Amakuni coming out this December. I'm guessing this must be like when you play the game and then you have this uh, NPC character guiding you throughout the game. Yeah, must be, right? I just have to love Amakuni's paint work. Like just from the blue color uniform alone, how many tones of blue color are there? Dark blue, navy blue, medium blue. Oh, I love the paint work over here. Yeah, even the very edges of hair strands where it goes from red to violet purple. I love it. I just love paint work like this, man. And unfortunately, Kotobukiya will never paint their figure like this. That was the one thing I was unhappy about, that Astolfo figure by Kotobukiya. I wish that the paint work looks a lot more like this, like what Amakuni is doing over here. Yeah. Hmm, I don't collect Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. Now moving on to the next figure over here. Ami Ami has made it really easy for me. Yeah, I don't have to edit this figure at least. Uh, they have partially covered the figure for me. Daiki Kase original character Jidori Shoujo selfie girl. Okay, one by six skill by Pink Cat, which is like a branch of native. They are uh, among the same group with native. Twenty six thousand eight hundred yen one by six skill. Somewhat reasonable and of course needless to say, since this is an edgy figure, yes, this is partially customable. If you like the character design, by all means go for it. Like once again, you look at the paint work on this figure, right? Look at the hair over here, the bangs over here. Dark brown, medium brown, with some shine in the middle, and then dark brown again at the very ends, at the very edges of the hair strands. This is the kind of paint work I want to see in every figure regardless of brand, but unfortunately, not every brand paint their figure like this, right? Moving on to the next one, we are back with another non-figure. There is this trend nowadays where they try to defile a, <laughs> a nun as much as possible because they're supposed to be something very holy in a way, you know? So they do the exact opposite and I'm loving every bit of it. Now we have a new Chinese figure brand I've never heard of, Eclipse Collectibles. Virtuous Nun Grace 1x7 skill. Uh, 14,630 yen after a small discount. Yeah, this one is just an ordinary figure. And the detail level is, once again, far from impressive, right? Like, I could tell easily, based on these product pictures alone, I don't even need to wait until the figure is in my hands. I can already tell. 14,000 yen, is it justifiable? Now, this is difficult because I have always advocated for all these low-cost scale figures coming out from China because they are excellent values for money. And not to mention that the Japanese figure companies, they are definitely aware of this threat coming from Chinese figure brands. But whether they choose to react to it or not is another matter altogether. So it really helps in keeping the prices from them in check, right? Like, it is controlling the Japanese figure prices indirectly in a way. In the recent year, figure prices are not as bad as those that went on pre-order in year 2022 and then releasing last year in year 2023. Yeah, recent 12 months, I feel like the prices are in better control in a way. And probably Chinese brands have something to do with that indirectly or not. Now, the problem with this figure, uh, this non-figure over here is that the detail level I'm looking at feels like something I would see from a 6,000 or 8,000 yen Animaster figure, yet it is being priced at 14,000 yen, right? 
Mm, maybe I should put more pictures on screen over here, like the back pictures, like that veil over her head. Like it is just a plain piece of semi translucent PVC with no detail on it, right? Like the process of painting this figure is not difficult. So just based on these two transparent parts, the one on her head and around her waist, it feels like this could have been a lot cheaper. Maybe it is in China, right? Regional pricing, where Chinese brand figures are cheaper in China. Maybe in China it is only 10,000 yen, who knows, right? And the last figure on Ami Ami, yeah, this is a native figure, native brand, Rocket Boy. Melon Books, <laughs> Futanari Tapestry Futaba. Futanari. Anyone of you collecting uh, Futanari figures, even though you are a guy like me, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear why you collect Futanari figures. Like, if you choose to get one or two, like, because you wanted variety in a figure collection, I guess that is a very good reason for it. But if you do buy one or two of these, let me know why you do so, right? I'm interested to hear your reasoning. That is all. Of course, I can only show the face of this figure over here. Yeah, you're getting giant opai and also a giant cannon between her legs because Futanari. 28,600 yen for 1 by 6 skill for yeah, such a great looking figure is actually okay pricing. Like, I rarely complain about uh, prices of figures coming from Native and their group, including Rocket Boy, Pink Cat, Pink Charm and so on, right? Okay, now we'll stop buying Ninin game for a while. Firstly, those uh, edgy inside figures, go and check them out yourself. There are several new ones this week, which I can't put on screen at all. And the last genuine figure on pre-order this week, I don't know why this is not on Ami Ami yet. Maybe they haven't released it yet. And once again, I can't show much because YouTube does not like it. Okay, characters selection, Z Zetai, Junpaku, Maho Shoujo, Suzuhara, Misa. I think there has been so many figures of this character already. Even Amakuni has made figures of her, right? Uh, Raita Art. Of course, this is not 50,000 yen. This is more like maybe 44 or 45,000 yen. Uh, Ninin game is charging a premium. So maybe wait for Ami Ami to pre-order open this one. Yeah. I like her face, but the problem is that that is the only part I like about her. I've never been a fan of the body proportions of this art style over here. Yeah. And that is all for genuine figures on pre-order this week. Now we move on to third-party resin figures making use of our affiliate partner, OSGK. There are some pre-order links down in the descriptions below. Make use of them if you are interested in any of the figures I'm about to cover. Okay, as usual, we'll go through only the female characters and I'll start things off with some chibi figures first, right? Super deformed figures. Well, uh, Nezuko is technically... <laughs> this is technically not a super deformed figure, but anyways... <laughs> uh, we have Nezuko cosplaying as Anya. What is up with all these crossovers involving Anya? $97 uh, at 1x6 skill, I presume. Yeah, 1x6 skill, 14 cm. Mm. When I look at the base this figure comes with, maybe the $97 price isn't that bad at all. Oh, okay. This is meant to be a set. I actually like that Anya figure more. Maybe because of, of the running pose, right? I like that Anya a lot more. Anyways, 97 bucks for a small figure. I know, I am not supposed to be judging figures based on their size, but that is my habit. Moving on to the next one. Okay, from CR Studio, we have Furina from Genshin Impact. Yeah, Q series. With CR Studio, if you like her, this is very nice. I like it a lot. Uh, CR Studio, their figures are great, right? I have seen actual pictures of their production line. Uh, I think they are Klee and also, what was the name again? They have two or three Genshin figures in this cute series, which are already released. And they look great. So if you like this Furina figure, go ahead and pick one up. $93 feels expensive, but this is a lot bigger than your typical Dendroid. Yeah, a lot bigger. This is, should be 18 centimeters or so, I think. Ah, 16 centimeters. All right. Let's move on to the next one over here. Court Studio, cute version, Raiden Shogun. Now this one looks horrible. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if the chibi figure was made by CR Studio, I would say go for it. But this one, I would say I don't like this at all. I don't like the face. Like, 
sure, there, is, there are many ways to interpret or convert a normal anime character into a super deformed design. There are many ways to interpret, but this one doesn't look good at all to me. Yeah, 97 bucks. No, I wouldn't pick up this one. I would wait for CR Studio to do their own version of Raiden Shogun. Mm. Moving on to the next one, we have another Anya figure over here, White Cost. Oh, this costume is based on the Code White movie, which I have not watched yet. Now, I like it a lot. This, uh, this outfit over here, 77 US dollars. Once again, 1 by 6 skill, right? Yeah, uh, 11 centimeters. Oh, this is small. This is more like 1 by 7 skill if it is 11 centimeters, but only 77 bucks, right? I think this is one of the better looking third party figures of Anya. Mm, I like this a lot. Have you watched the Code White movie or it hasn't aired in your country yet? Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. The next one here, this is an original character, so it might appear in Japanese websites a week or two later. For you, Studio Original Pool Party figure Lily. 1x6 and 1x4 available. Just that. I don't like the face on this figure. 1x4 skill is only 255. I mean, there is a reason why she is so cheap, right? 1x6 skill, 172 bucks. I can't say I could recommend this one. Your 250, 260 dollars. It is hard-earned money. Spend it on something better, man. Yeah, I don't like the face at all. And we are not yet getting into how I am going to complain about how there is barely enough detail on the figures. <laughs> I am a detail addict in a way. I love details. Okay, next one over here. From Shunga Studio and Chien Studio, we have... And also TOC Studio. We have Mikasa from Attack on Titan. This is 430 US dollars at... 1x4 scale, which is very reasonable considering the package you're getting. I mean, you have Mikasa and three titans over there having fun with her. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I want to scroll through the pictures. Maybe it should be fine, I think. Do you like the face of this Mikasa figure? Mm, subjective, right? Yes, realistic version, but at the same time, it does not look too bad to me. Yeah, I think this is something totally subjective. For me though, this is a definite no, not something I would buy. Now let's move on to the next one over here. This is a very nice looking figure of Asuka from Evangelion by Beast Studio. Okay, and this is not too expensive. 1x4 skill, $347. And 1x6 skill, $191. The only problem is that, number one, Beast Studio has a history of art theft. And number two, this specific Asuka over here, this artwork over here, feels very familiar to me. So if you know something, please let me know down in the comments below. Of course, I do not want to blindly accuse a figure brand of stealing out artwork without any evidence or, so, or anything like that. But I feel that it is a responsibility of mine uh, to inform you guys. Yeah. No, I am not accusing them of stealing yet until there is proof of proof of them doing so. Which this specific figure or this specific character design over here, yes, it feels really familiar. It feels like I've seen it somewhere before. Um, at the same time, I am not going to discourage. Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys not to buy it just because of the suspicious nature nature of this figure, like. Each one of us, we have our own personal stance on what is acceptable, what isn't. And we don't have to agree with each other. You are entitled to your own choices, right? Your own personal choices. Hmm. But seriously, this is... Even though this is a simple figure, I actually like the pose over here. Very photogenic. I mean, I'm looking at this from the perspective of a figure photographer, which is why I like this Asuka so much. Hmm. Moving on to the next one from Yomi Studio, we have Tsunade from Naruto, $235 at 1x6 skill. Now, okay, the swimsuit, the bikini is real fabric, very obvious over here. And I wanted to zoom in on the face. What do you think about her face over here? I think it looks fabulous, man. 
This is possibly one of the better looking figures of Tsunade yet from third parties. I like the face a lot over here. The only unfortunate part is that they had to use real fabric for the bikini which I am not a fan of. I know, if you make those bikini parts with resin, they are very fragile, they break very easily, but just do it with rubbery material, with PVC material, right? I would take that over fabric any day. Yeah. Oh, the face is really good, man, on this one. 235 bucks if you don't mind the fabric bikini. Yes, pick one up. Moving on to the next one, we have only one figure from One Piece this week. No Boa Hancock. No Yamato for this week. Uh, from Hinami Studio, we have Mononoke, uh, Princess Mononoke Perona. Two years later. Okay, $280 maximum. I really have no idea what they mean by high configuration, low profile, rendering, and entities so over here. Like, what? <laughs> this is a very early bird pre-order. We don't have any pictures yet. This is the only picture we have. And here we go again with weird character designs in the One Piece universe. I never liked One Piece for that reason, right? All their weird character designs. Hmm... Anyways, this is a very early bird pre-order with missing details. The high-end version comes with a low-end platform. A different base, I think. You're paying for a different base for the high-end, more expensive version. Maybe the one you're looking at, this is the high-end version. Uh, and then there is a simpler base at a lower cost. That is purely my guess over here, right? No details yet. Moving on to the next figure, one of the main highlights this week in the third party segment. What did I tell you guys just last week, once again? I said that Epsim Studio was only the first one to make a figure of Acheron, and because these companies are always competing against each other for business, yeah, more will be coming in the following weeks, and hey, look, Arctic Wolf Studio is here with their own version of Acheron. That was so predictable, right? Okay, uh, the, don't be shocked by the price of 423 bucks. That is like a deluxe version where you're getting two entire figures, which I don't see as necessary, right? Uh, the second version is of course an edgy version, which I'm not showing on screen. As for the main version over here, there are two different color variants, right? Yeah, two different color versions. And I would say I am quite tempted by this uh, black and white version for some reason. Maybe because there are too many game characters with purple magenta color. Like in FGO at least, so many characters come in purple color. <laughs> Shuten Doji, uh, Ushiwakamaru, and like so many of them, right? I'm just mentioning my favorite characters over here and all of them share the same color. <laughs> and from the looks of it, even in many other games, many characters have blue to purple color scheme for some reason. So... You know, I kind of want this one just because it looks very different. At the same time, I would prefer the original character color in a way. So this is very difficult for me. I have been pre-ordering like two or three Epsim Studio figures already. I don't want to buy the same brand again. I want to try more different figure brands. And this one by Arctic Wolf Studio, this might be it. Like... This what might be one of my first Arctic Wolf Studio figures. Yeah. Whatever that object is behind her, that great color thing, it makes the figure stand out so much because of color contrast. Is that transformed from her red color umbrella? Like, you know that umbrella is a secret weapon of some kind? I don't know. I know nothing about this character. What I know is that I like the character design so much that I am considering this one right here. So, the one you're looking at be it grey colour or blue colour, yeah, this is actually $272, which is not too bad, right? Version C is an edgy version, which I'm not putting on screen because she is wearing nothing. And then D and E, presumably you're getting a deluxe package. Between this blue and edgy version or grey and edgy version, you're paying $423. Bucks. I would stick to the standard version. I'm not interested in the edgy version if I had to choose. Moving on to the next one from Honey Peach Studio, we have Himeko from Honkai Star Real. What is that price of 888 bucks, man? Like, even if this is 1x4 skill, it shouldn't be that expensive. Yeah, this is 1x4 skill, but that price is not confirmed yet anyway. It might be lower. 
this should be around 500 to 600 maximum, I think. Or maybe $650 because of the base, right? Realistic face? Nope. This doesn't look good at all. I don't like this face. Ugh. Come on, man. I know the Chinese collectors like realistic faces, but give us an extra hit with the anime face. Moving on to the next one from FFS Studio, we have Swimwear Series Raiden Shogun and Yae Miko from Genshin Impact. Now, this is really cheap. If you want a simple figure of uh, Yae Miko and Raiden Shogun, you don't want to pay too much because there are no genuine figures of these two characters, then yeah, this is a great buy, like $117 each for a 1x6 scale bikini figure and you can get both deluxe edition for 208 a small discount. As long as you don't mind lower levels of detail in an anime figure, after all, this is just like uh, wave beach queens but 1x6 scale, you know? Then this is a great buy by all means. After all, Yae Miko and Raiden Shogun are immensely popular. I can see a lot of people buying this. Yeah. Moving on to the next one. This is... The main highlight this week for 1x4 skills, right? 1x6 skill was definitely Akiron. 1x4 skill, this figure of Noshiro from Azalane by x Xpeak Studio. <laughs> but wait, I know you are already cringing after looking at her face, but chill and hold on, right? So there is realistic version and anime version where you can choose. You're looking at realistic version, $500, and anime version, where they only have a 3D render for now for $500 as well. And then there is the deluxe edition, which you are getting extra swappable parts, presumably customable, right? So you are not getting an extra hit. If you bought the realistic version or anime version, but you want the other hit, you need to buy the hit separately for $99 each. Yeah, you can buy the hit separately. I think this is a good way of giving people options. And then, this is not my favorite version of Noshiro. My favorite version is version B. Now, this one, oh, this at 1x4 skill is fantastic, man. Oh! <sighs> Look at this, man! <laughs> Look at this, man! This is fabulous! This is my favorite 1x4 skill this week, hands down. And this is the one I'm telling you guys to get if you want a 1x4 skill figure of Noshiro. Like, forget about the school uniform version earlier. Forget about choosing between realistic or animation version. Get this version B. This is outstanding. Oh, I love this so much. Ooh. Man, I wish that I am a lot richer, then I would definitely buy one, man. $567, I would say it is really reasonable considering the amount of stuff you're getting. Right? Best 1x4 skill this week. Hmm. Moving on to the next one from GA Studio, we have Tifa Lockhart from Final Fantasy again at 1x4 skill, $347. As usual, with third parties, you get them to make a figure from Final Fantasy, they will increase their bust size by a cup or two. This is not nice at all. Like, overall as a figure, I don't think I have much of an issue. It is a very attractive figure. But this does not look like Tifa at all to me. Yeah, uh, I suppose there is some resemblance, but the body proportion is definitely off. Yeah. At least this is very cheap. Like, $347, you're getting 1x4 skill. Including everything in the picture, it is a bargain. If you don't mind the inaccurate body proportions, then by all means pick one up. But I am not a fan of this figure of Tifa at all. Yeah. Moving on to the next one from Ji Guang Studio and FH Studio, we have Yuzuriha Inori from Guilty Crown. Okay, so this is available in 1x4 skill at only $246. 1x6 skill, $170 suspiciously cheap right yeah if this is under 250 bucks at 1x4 just go all out and buy 1x4 skill i don't expect this figure to be uh very detailed in any way even though the pictures may suggest otherwise mm, i do like the face i mean it is different different from what we see in the anime it is definitely not the same but i don't hate it 
I'm starting to question myself now as a fan of Yuzuriha Inori. Like I loved the anime back then, even though there were many criticisms on it, especially in the second half of the anime series. Hmm. Moving on to the next one, Player One Studio, Jujutsu Kaisen Awakening, Maki Zenin. Okay, uh, once again, two skills available. One by four skill, $608. One by six skill, 408 Wow, that is really expensive. Hmm. Female character, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, you can kind of tell based on the body proportions, especially the hips area, the way the body curves, right? Wow. Ah, I see. You are getting extra parts. That is why she is expensive. A very cool looking figure of her, but no, I don't buy JJK stuff. Okay, and then the final three figures for today's video, something cultured, which I have to cover up, right? We'll go through them very quickly. First one over here, yeah. These third-party figure brands, they like to do all kinds of things to Raiden Shogun for some reason. So here we have Raiden Shogun stuck with some tentacles for $226 only at 1x4 skill. Yeah, that is a bargain. As long you don't mind the low levels of details once again, yeah. You like cultured figures like this, this might be worth considering. 1x6 skill is only $115. Hmm. The second one over here, we have Starry Sky Studio Hongkai Starreal Jing Liu, which I can't recommend at all because she is barely wearing anything like... Yeah, sure, the character looks like Jing Liu, but what else, right? Everything else looks so pedestrian and plain that I am not a fan of it at all, even at a lowly price of $307 at 1x4 skill, I would still say I can't recommend this one. And the last figure for today, okay, this is possibly a PVC figure by a licensed genuine Chinese figure brand, but I am covering it because I am unsure, yeah. Because this is 1x7 skill, and resin figure brands, they rarely do 1x7, so I am suspecting this is a PVC figure, a licensed one, because this is an original character, original Futa Succubus, uh, War Princess Yunali, right, $147, but... Could be cheaper if this comes, uh, this is priced in Japanese yen, who knows, we'll wait and see. Anyways, this is once again the kind of original character where you buy depending on whether you like the character design. And that is all for figures on pre-order this week. Yeah, there are a lot of stuff this week. Which one will you pre-order? Let me know down in the comments below. Until then, if you enjoyed this video today, give this video a thumbs up, a like, and subscribe for more videos like this every week. Until then, I'll see you guys again very soon. Goodbye.